Hi, my name is Melissa van Dijk and in this video we are looking into if your vitamin C can help you to boost your sunscreen and if it does, when is it important to use it before your sunscreen and when it's best to use it in the evening instead. Now to understand this a bit further we need to look into some research and then I want to share with you certain products where it can be helpful to use it before applying your sunscreen and when it's best to use it just in the evening. Now, based on research that I could find online that was publicly available, it always would bring me back to what I already know based on the book that I have. And this is a book which is called Cosmeceuticals and Cosmetic Ingredients by Leslie Baumann. And she really looked into the research um, herself and summarized it in a much simpler way to understand what was going on and what is the outcome of it. And so this is now where we are going to look into it. And I have highlighted certain parts that are important for this specific topic. Now, we should remember that ascorbic acid is a great antioxidant. It has anti-inflammatory properties. It is photoprotectant. It has the pigmenting abilities, it helps to boost the collagen production, and it has wound healing properties. So please remember what vitamin C can do on the skin, because this is now important when looking into the research. But first of all, before looking into what has been tested based on how has it been tested, we need to look into the formulation. I still, this already will tell you a lot about when it's great to use a vitamin C in the morning and when it's best to use it in the evening. So right here it says formulation consideration. Vitamin C has been found to have increased stability and efficacy in combination with other antioxidants such as vitamin E, ferulic acid, fluorotin and pycnogenol. Topical formulations containing these combinations have been shown to exert photoprotective activity. So right here this little summary tells you that it's best to combine vitamin C with another antioxidant or with multiple antioxidants so that vitamin C is going to be stabilized as it is quite unstable and it can oxidize quite quickly but at the same time it can help you to boost your photoprotective activity as this is what you want to know like when is it good to use your vitamin C product just before applying your sunscreen well it already gives you the answer right here it's best when it contains multiple antioxidants in the same formulation with your vitamin C. But let's look into this a bit deeper. Right here it says, vitamin C has become a popular addition to after sun products. Well, you now may wonder, well, why after sun products? I thought I should use it before applying my sunscreen so I can have more protection. Well, in this specific case, if you're just looking into vitamin C itself, it has anti-inflammatory properties and it can help you with wound healing. Therefore, it would be a great after sun product. So let's say in the morning you're waking up, you're doing your skincare without applying your vitamin C, you're just using your sunscreen. Then you're being exposed to the sun during daytime. There's no sunscreen that's going to protect your skin 100%. So there's always a bit of damage that happens on the skin. And then when you're coming back home and you're just doing this before going to bed when washing your face again, then apply your vitamin C on the skin and it can help you to heal or improve the damage that has been done from the sunlight. And so therefore it is a great after sun product. But let's see what has been tested. In a study of photoprotective properties of vitamin C, pigs treated with topical ascorbic acid exhibited fewer sunburned cells than those treated with the vehicle alone, so without ascorbic acid, when exposed to both UVA and UVB irradiation. Investigators also noted a significant reduction in erythema, this is when your skin is irritated and red and inflamed, in areas treated with vitamin C and decreases in the amount of vitamin C remaining on the skin after UV exposure. So right here they're just talking about vitamin C and it, uh, based on their research, vitamin C could help to reduce the sunburned cells because it has anti-inflammatory properties and wound healing properties. In a subsequent study, the same researchers found that topical vitamin C combined with either a UVA or UVB sunscreen improved the sun protection as compared to the sunscreen alone. So this sentence right here, I think this is where everything is coming from, that you should use your vitamin C just before applying your sunscreen. However, it does not give you a lot of detail based on if this is just the vitamin C alone, just in this little paragraph, or if it has been combined with something else, which we are now going to look into. Also, the combination of vitamin C and E delivered protection from UVB in salt. 
though the bulk of protection was attributable to vitamin E, but vitamin C alone has been demonstrated in other studies to mitigate, so to reduce the effects of UVB, such as erythema, so again irritated reddit skin, and sites of photoaging skin on porcelain and human skin. So again, the signs of photoaging, this is probably why most of us wanted to use a vitamin C as it can help you to reduce it and improve it. But at the same time, again, that it has helped vitamin C alone with again irritated and inflamed skin. So it did a reduction, it calmed the skin, it was like healing the skin, like the damage that has been done from the UVB rays. But above it says that the combination of vitamin C and E that vitamin E did the most based on protection. So as of, th this is how I understand it. Vitamin C helps to reduce the inflammation and uh, the damage that has been done from the sunlight, but vitamin E protects the skin from specifically right here UVB insult, so damage. And so there is a big difference then uh, between vitamin E and vitamin C based on how they work when using it uh, before or with your sunscreen. Then right here on the bottom it says, vitamin C reduces and therefore recycles oxidized vitamin E back into its active form, so the antioxidant potency of vitamin E is regenerated. And this is quite interesting, because they tried a study with vitamin C and vitamin E alone. Then they tried a study with vitamin C and E, where they found, well, this is a great combination there where they work hand in hand, not only because vitamin C helps to heal the skin, whereas then vitamin E protects the skin, but it also helps um, to like, um, like regenerate vitamin E if it has already oxidized. So they are working hand in hand. Vitamin C and E in this specific case for me states clear that they have to be used in the same formulation as vitamin C helps with the skin but at the same time helps vitamin E to stay stronger. And so this is really quite interesting based on what they have tested. And they've tried another combination as well, which then leads me to the products that I wanna share with you. Right here, they also say that they had a formulation with 15% of ascorbic acid, 1% of vitamin E, and 0.5% of ferulic acid. Now, some of you, depending on what vitamin C you have, you may note that this is a combination that your vitamin C product has already in it. And if it does, well, then it would be a great option to use it just before applying your sunscreen. And this now brings me to the products that I want to share with you where this is basically backed by research and when it's best to not use your vitamin C product in the morning just before your sunscreen. The first product, which they also do state in the book itself, would be SkinCeuticals Vitamin C Serum. That one has the exact formulation as I just highlighted in the book. It contains the 15% of ascorbic acid, 1% of vitamin E, and the 0.5% of ferulic acid. And so if we remember back to the first paragraph that I have highlighted, um, first of all, vitamin C and E work hand in hand. Plus, if you're going to add another antioxidant to this um, to this formulation, it helps to stabilize the vitamin C and it helps to strengthen the overall formulation. So this serum right here would be a great option to use before applying your sunscreen, as this is what has been tested and had shown the most like strongest effect if you want to do this and use it during daytime. The next one would be a very similar formulation, which is Geek and Gorgeous Vitamin C Serum. And they also have it based on the book. They are working with 15% of vitamin C serum, they have folic acid in it and vitamin E in it. So again, the same combination, the same formulation. So this would be also a great alternative to use before applying your sunscreen. The next one would be Paula's Choice Vitamin C Booster. Same thing, they do include antioxidants, they have folic acid right here, they have vitamin E here, and they have the vitamin C right here. So they do have like those three zones that I just have shared with you are great options to use before applying your sunscreen as this is what has been tested in the study. Now, when it comes to when it's best to not use your vitamin C before applying your sunscreen based on the stability and maybe the downturn it can have, then it would bring me in this specific case to the ordinary vitamin C products, ascorbic acid products. But there are other brands on the market as well if they want to keep the formulation as simple as possible. So for example, with the ascorbic acid and alpha butin serum, that one does not contain 
anything else other than ascorbic acid and alpha butene and this ingredient right here which gives it the um, like oily feeling the propandenol which is the solution where this basically dissolved in but it doesn't include a lot. It does not include vitamin E, it does not include ferulic acid, pignotinol, or any of the other antioxidants. So therefore, based on the research that has been tested and what has been demonstrated is effective and when it's best to use it as an after sun product, I would use the ordinary ascorbic acid alpha butene in the evening. Now they do say on the ordinary side that you can use it in the morning as well as evening, but for me personally, based on the research where it has been tested, I would consider this as my evening serum so that it can help to improve the damage that has been done from the sunlight and it also contains alpha butene so to improve my hyperpigmentation in this specific case the next point that i do want to make is the vitamin c suspensions from the ordinary they have the 23 percent as well as the 30 percent and both of them have first of all a very high amount of ascorbic acid in it and second of all, again, the formulation is so simple. They do not include vitamin E or any other antioxidants. It's purely the vitamin C in a water-free formulation. And so again, in this specific case, it would be best to use it in the evening. That's why the ordinary does specifically say, use your vitamin C suspension in the evening, because you can experience um, that it oxidizes on the skin when using it during daytime. So it cannot properly penetrate into the skin. It has a high percentage of ascorbic acid in it when being exposed to the sun, which may lead to uneven patches because the vitamin C sits on top of the skin surface, and therefore you end up with an uneven skin tone. It it does not have to happen, but it does make sense why the ordinary recommends using the vitamin C suspensions in the evening due to the percentage and because they do not have a formulation that would stabilize the vitamin C and give you more protection when using it during daytime. So those are now the products that I wanted to share with you so that you have a better understanding when it's best to use it during daytime and when it's best to use it in the evening instead. So again, what we need to remember is that please make sure that you're looking for a water-based serum that contains vitamin C, vitamin E and ferulic acid or other antioxidants that would support the vitamin C for protection and stability. Then you can go ahead and use it during daytime before applying your sunscreen. But of course you could use the same serum in the evening instead. If it does not fit with those specific factors, I recommend using it in the evening. So if you have a vitamin C serum or cream that's very heavy, that's very thick, that more so sits on the skin surface than penetrates the skin, I recommend using it in the evening instead. This way you're just making sure that it's not going to be mixed up and blended in with your sunscreen where this may erase certain issues. And at the same time, you won't end up with dark brownish patches because that's what I often in here if you're using a vitamin C serum that does not properly penetrate the skin that you then wonder well how can it be that I'm now darker or have like uneven patches on my face if I'm working with a vitamin C which should help me to protect my skin and to some extent even lighten my skin so there are certain issues and downturns that can happen when not working with that specific formulation so please keep this in mind However, now I want to cover another specific topic where you probably do not need to use a vitamin C serum at all because your sunscreen has already everything in it. And there are certain sunscreens on the market that have like a very like nice variety of different ingredients which could support the UV protection, but at the same time most sunscreens already contain vitamin E in it. So I have a few examples right here. First one would be one of Paula's Choice, which is a super light wrinkle defense SPF 30. That one, for example, has a great combination of resveratrol, which is an antioxidant, and then other antioxidants as well as vitamin E. And it also contains a vitamin C derivative. Now, what's interesting is that they right here do not work with ascorbic acid, but they're working with vitamin C derivatives instead. I believe this has something to do with the overall formulation as it is much stabler than vitamin C, like ascorbic acid itself, especially in a water-based formulation where you need to have a low pH environment. 
The next one would be again another example of Paula's Choice sunscreens, which would be the Essential Glow Moisturizer with SPF. And right here again, it's full of antioxidants, and it again has also ascorbic glucoside, vitamin C derivative, magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, vitamin C derivative. So it has a great mixture of different antioxidants and vitamin C derivatives that can help you to boost your sunscreen itself. It's already mixed in the formulation. The same applies to their skin recovery moisturizer with SPF. That one again has also a nice mixture of vitamin C and antioxidants. If you are now looking into different brands, the same would apply to the ordinary um, SPF as this one is an antioxidant sunscreen. And it has an entire list full of different antioxidants, even again, topical wall, which is vitamin E. So you have a nice mixture. It does not contain a vitamin C derivative, as I believe since they already have so many different vitamin C options, they just are working right here with antioxidants themselves, like other than vitamin C. And then the next one would be the Inkis List sunscreen. That one again has a great mixture of vitamin E right here, as well as ascorbyl palmitate, which is a vitamin C derivative. So if you have a sunscreen at home, check your sunscreen's ingredients list, and maybe you have already a sunscreen that contains all in one, and then you do not feel the need of using another vitamin C zone beforehand because your uh, like sunscreen does already the job. It has already a great formulation. And so in this specific case, Look into the serum or moisturizer that you're having based on the information that I just have shared with you, then go with using it during daytime or in the evening instead, and look into your sunscreen if it has already such ingredients in it where you probably do not need to work with a vitamin C serum or moisturizer as well. Now, I do hope that you enjoyed this video, that you find it helpful. If you did so, please don't forget to give the thumbs up as well as share it. And if you now want to know more about skincare and see the different applications or want to know more information information about skincare ingredients. I have several videos for you on my YouTube channel and I'm going to end and I'm going to list some of them at the end of this video so that you can keep on watching. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon in the next one. Happy skincaring. Bye.